Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Sim Pilot. and today we have a very 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 exciting video for you. We are here in Microsoft Flight Simulator after the latest update for the 40th anniversary which gives us free access to the Ine Simulations A310 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is an aircraft that is uh, it's very different to what we've seen before. It's one of the few heavy high detailed aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, and also, you know, one of the few that are out there in the flight simulation land anyway. It's also a very interesting aircraft. It's a retro piece of aviation history, there's no doubt about it. So it's uh, it's especially important to us on an Airbus-related channel because it, of course, is so uh, inherent, inherently tied into the history of the A320 that we fly and love these days. I'm going to take you today through the process of getting this aircraft set up and into the air so we're going to start with a very simple video today. We're going to go from sitting on the runway with the engines running. What do we need to do? What do we need to load into the aircraft? Uh, what do we need to do to take it off? What buttons do we need? What do the modes do? Uh, and where are the basic things that we need in the flight deck? There's a few key differences to the A320 that I've learned through trial and error and having flown this on the channel before and with help from other people. Uh, in particular, I need to um, say a big thank you to the Dan Virtual Dan Air Airline, or Dan Air Virtual it's called, um, with uh, Matteo who wrote some excellent SOPs for the A310 uh, so that uh, they will be available if you do join Dan Air Virtual but yeah it's uh, it's really really a, a special airplane it's excellently modeled we've got fantastic sounds fantastic visuals all the systems are here that we would expect to have so yeah really really excited so today's video a simple run through to get you flying in the A310 and get it in the air if you want to know how to start it out from cold and dark uh, I will I have already made a video in the x 11 version very recently to give you a sort of familiarization of the cockpit and show you a cold and dark start up, up to engine start, uh, or including engine start I should say. But uh, for today's video I'll run through the basics and how to get this airplane uh, in the air from just loading it up in the simulator for the first time and how to load in the route and, and, and fly the route and fly the approach and so on. Like I say, some key differences over the A320. We're going to fly from Gatwick up to Manchester, a classic sort of short UK route. Uh, and I'm using this old world travel livery from Flight Simulator X. Couldn't resist it. Absolutely love it. So let's get started. Of course, first of all, uh, I've got to take you on a quick look around the outside. If you haven't yet downloaded this aircraft or are, are, are waiting to do it when you get the chance. Um, yeah, so an excellent visual model, as we would expect. Really captures the proportions of what is quite a short and, uh, and stubby aircraft in many ways. The A310 is a shortened version of the A300, so don't be fooled. Although it has a higher number, it is a, a shorter version of the A300, designed to fill a market that Airbus thought was there of, uh, of a slightly smaller ver uh, aircraft than the, the A300. The A300 was Airbus's first commercial aircraft. This is a very similar airplane in many ways, like I say, just a bit shorter. Uh, it includes a two-person flight deck, which was revolutionary at the time for a long-haul jet-heavy aircraft. So just two pilots needed. It's got some um, integration of screens. It's got uh, the first versions of ECAM and, and uh, electronic uh, information being displayed to the pilots, which is really, really interesting. The A310 effectively was a competitor with the 767. It was eventually replaced by the A330-200, so the shorter A330, no surprise. So that's the sort of scale of aircraft we're looking at here. It's, it's a big, heavy, heavy jet, so it is different to what we are used to. And remember as well, it is older, so everything about it is, is older technology. We have uh, older engines, older systems inside, older hydraulic setup, older aerodynamics. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a, a different feel to the A320 and of course doesn't use a side stick. First flew in 1982, although it would actually tell you that in the Microsoft Flight Simulator <laughs> um, loading tips as well. Um, and it uh, shared the flight deck, of course, with the A300. So one of the first sort of experiments into uh, having two... Uh, or a similar type rating for the pilot. So a pilot who could fly the A310 could fly the A300, um, which has become quite normal these days with the A320 short haul family. Uh, Boeing have it with the 75, 76, and then they also had it with, uh, with some of the later aircraft. But there we go. But a really nice exterior model. I particularly like the way you can see this, uh, see the, I forget the name of them now, but uh, um, the <laughs> way the structure is made, you can see the, the rippling in the, the skin of the aircraft, especially around the front where the proportions are changing, which is really nice. So absolutely lovely, lovely visual model. Uh, and it's got a nice amount of grime. I'd probably go for an even grimier aircraft. I think it depends, of course, on the livery and which texture you uh, you use. And um, this one looks very clean. World Travel have obviously looked after their, their A310 <laughs> in an exemplary way. Absolutely lovely. The sounds as well, um, you'll hear them throughout the video, but they are super, really, really, really good. Um, so that's what we'd like to see. Right, let's jump into the flight deck and get this aircraft into the air. 
So here we are on the flight deck and this is what you'll first load into if you load up on the engines running on the runway. Like I say, check out my channel for the video on the cold and dark if you would like to do a full startup from stand. We'll do that later on the channel for sure. First of all, you do have an EFB over here. So it'll tell you your aircraft version and your flight details, which I haven't loaded in yet. Then you have uh, panel states that you can select. So uh, ready for takeoff would be the obvious one that I'm going to use today, which I can activate. And then you can set them as default. So you could also have it on the APU or GPU and the turnaround or completely cold and dark. So we're going to have ready for takeoff. Then if we go to ground services, you can open the doors, have ground power, air power and uh, jet bridge and also pushback, which is very nice, uh, including clicking on the door. So a nice graphical interface over here. Then we have the normal checklist, which is just a file. But uh, yeah, this is this is going to be useful. Uh, absolutely. Then we have crucially a takeoff performance calculator, which we will use very shortly on this video. Uh, and then your load sheet for loading up the aircraft with fuel and weights. And then down here in settings, you can choose if you want kilograms, uh, hectopascals, which is what I absolutely do want. Uh, IRS alignment time, realistic short. Uh, linking the instruments, so that's if you want your um, Q and H, for example, on this side or not that one. Uh, there we go. If I wanted this to change to also adjust the Q and H's in the standby and the FO side. So I've got that turned on because I think it is handy. Reset of brake temperatures. Default thrust reduction. Doesn't really matter which one you choose. Some airlines use 1500 feet above aerodrome level. Some use 1000. Uh, you can calibrate the thrust levers. So if you're struggling with the thrust levers like me, um, if we're getting reversed, then you can calibrate them in there. Uh, by going through, if I click on it, um, a scale. Now I have not had much luck with this so far. Um, I've tried a few different methods and I have not managed to make it work for me. So I'm not going to talk too much about that just yet. I'm currently working on with my Thrustmaster TCA without reverse on the same axes. That's how I've managed to get nice control, but I'm sure I'm doing something wrong there. Um, and then you can adjust the audio. So that's it really, quite a simple EFB, but it's got everything that we would really need. Uh, so what I'm going to do first, uh, we've done the panel state, we've set it ready for takeoff uh, and we don't need the ground, but we do need to load up the aircraft. So that's there. Right. Next things we need to discuss are, so we talked about the um, thrust levers. Uh, other things are pretty straightforward. So um, the speed brake is assigned on the speed brake axis and you can arm it and disarm it by dragging it up and down just like you can in the 320s family. So that's great. Flap lever as well works quite normally in my TCA as well as the park brake. So a lot of my settings from my other Airbus aircraft have carried straight over which is really quite handy. So that is very, very nice indeed. Gear as well works fine. So uh, yeah, that's good. You need an autopilot disconnect button which uh, is here and my autopilot off command has worked just fine for that. Um, similar to the uh, my control, the same command actually for the Phoenix, uh, and also trim. You're going to need trim assigned. So I have a trim pitch up and pitch down. This aircraft does not automatically trim. It's not a 320, so we need pitch trim assigned. Uh, so you can have it on an axis or two separate buttons. So I've got one button for nose down pitch trim and another button for nose up pitch trim. So there we go. Uh, even the engine master switches or fuel cutoffs have worked uh, using the uh, master switch. Um, cross uh, control commands that I used for the A320. So that's all very nice indeed. A quick look around the flight deck then. We need to um, give ourselves a bit of a show. So these are all the quick looks. Let's see if they have a nice overhead one. No, they, they've divided up the overhead, um, which is nice, but perhaps I'd rather a, a full overview. But yeah, so it's similar to the A320. I, I won't go over this too much. I highly recommend you watch my video on it. Uh, for the copy familiarization video I did very recently. Um, but yeah, this was one of the few aircraft at the time to have just two pilots, especially for a long haul aircraft. So uh, this stuff back here is just APU information and other things. It's not functional, um, which is no surprise. Overhead panel is more complicated than the A320, but better than a lot of aircraft at the time. So circuit breakers are up here. Then you've got your IRS here. Uh, and then, so this is our little IRS display and control panel. But the IRSs are in nav mode, as you can see. There's one here, one here, and one here. They're separated apart, which I actually think is quite a good idea. Um, but there are pros and cons. I'm sure they've decided carefully why they move them. Uh, then you've got flight control computers, spoilers, pitch field, radar travel. Down here you've got hydraulics, hydraulic quantities, and the hydraulic pumps. A lot of this stuff we're going to leave off. Seatbelt signs here and the no smoking signs are all down here. Then we've got external lights, as you do on the 320, similar place. Pitch trim, control, your damper, uh, and then ATS. These all need to be on, otherwise your FCU down here will be blank. So these should all be on the pitch trim, your damper, and ATS. Then you've got your electrical panel over here. Including these are the batteries. So when you first turn on, uh, again, don't go into this too much. Generator switches, uh, electrical power, and up here you can actually show what these are telling you. So if I wanted to see what the number one generator is doing, I can see the load on it, the voltage, the hertz, stuff that 
these days they don't bother giving us uh, this information in this format anymore. Over here we have the main landing gear down lock, sort of a backup display of the landing gear. Uh, aircraft manufacturers <laughs> had a lot of different backups for landing gear back in the day. Um, less so these days. More they, they obviously deem their systems more reliable. Fuel panel, including what's feeding and what's off. So these are the fuel pumps, so on and off. More complex fuel system than the 320. Something's carried over, but there is a trim tank in the back and all sorts, being a long-haul aircraft. This is our fuel display. Now, this is repeated on lower down, but there you go. Fuel display. Engine system, so continuous relight for takeoff, but also the ignition system again please do watch my video for that apu control wiper control cabin pressurization panel over here uh, and then we've got the pro peats which are all on uh, fire test oxygen and low pressure oxygen uh, avionics ventilation up here uh, oh yeah i have also completely disregarded the hf boxes over there which will be used more on long haul uh, and then we've got the temperature control for the aircraft the bleeds the apu bleed engine bleed uh, and down here some um, the emergency lights arming switches so that's the overhead panel pretty normal it's just a few variances over the 320. strangely enough if you want to light it up the lights are down here so i'm going to turn these up for the sake of this video so it's easier for everyone to see what's going on good and now the other panel is lit up then we have our fcu flight control unit very similar to the 320 we're going to talk about that as we fly a efis control over here similar idea uh, and then we have airspeed also repeated with more modern speed tape on this glass cockpit that we have which is great news uh, I'm going to set the correct Q&H now, actually. There we go. Um, by pressing B, and that's going to move across. Here's our brake anti-skid and auto brake switch for maximum for what we'd use for takeoff. Then you've got mid and low. This is automatically set to maximum if you load up and they're ready for takeoff. Over here is the thrust com uh, our computer for calculating uh, thrust settings and limiting settings. So we'll talk about that shortly. Uh, and then we have, obviously, our MCDU or CDU as it was back in the day. Uh, I'll probably end up calling it an MCDU a lot more. Uh, here we have our ECAM screens and our engine displays in the middle. So uh, unlike the Airbus, we don't have an engine display in the traditional sense, though you can do it over here. You can get backup information, but it's not showing us the key information because that is done through these analog gauges, which is quite nice with a little digital display. So N1, uh, which is the speed of the fan at the front, EGT, exhaust gas temperature, N2, which is the fan behind the front. You can't see it. Uh, and then the fuel flow in the middle there fuel used so this display does not show the same thing fuel flow and fuel used and then you've got your oil pressure and quantity they're just sort of the key data down here is where we tune the ILS and course or VOR if we need it and uh, they've, they've moved on from that in the 320 family uh, and then down here are our radio panels so that's a quick overview of the flight deck here we have flap lever pitch trim speed brakes engine masters parking brake and take a config test by the way is hidden down here so there you go very quick flight deck uh, uh, overview and I'm now going to turn on lots more lights. So if you need them, if you're sitting in the dark, uh, more those, the other lights you'll need are these ones down here. So these will light up the rest of the flight deck for you. Good. So as we are sitting here with the engines running, let's um, let's move on to loading up the computer with the information for our flight today. Now, the Microsoft Flight Simulator route, I haven't seen it load straight across, so I don't think that works, but you can load SimBrief in. If you press menu, A cards, you can put in your username in of SimBrief and request it. Now, I haven't had this working yet, but I have had some connectivity issues this evening. So uh, that's there. You can also put in ATIS, and you could load up the weather for wherever you are. So if I put in um, Gatwick, which is where we are, if we had internet, <laughs> which we don't, I believe it would return us with uh, an ATIS. It does give you a little message. However, like I say, I have, I have the uh, my internet connection is down at the moment, or I'm not able to connect to to flight simulator. So there we go. Um, so that's available there. But uh, we're going to start off with the FMS. So menu FMS. Here's our data page, as it were, correct database, which is good news. Uh, and then I'm going to go to init. Now engines running. The Airbus is slightly different, but uh, here we go. Gatwick to Manchester. So I'm having to do this manually, like I say, because it wouldn't load in. Um, we are going to be a flight ID MXZ. There we go. Now I'm actually upgraded. MXZ 222. That's because it's decided it knows where it is. That's a flight number down there. Uh, I'm going to go with my cruise wind. So I've actually loaded this into SimBrief. Uh, cruise wind of 21533, which is just the average wind. And. Oh, no. That's because. That goes there. Good. Uh, and uh, alternate of, we're going to come back down to Heathrow if we need to. So that can go in there. Good stuff. We don't need a company route. We're not doing that. So that is the init A page, as it were. So we've told the airplane roughly what we're doing. Good. 
Um, right, next, uh, we would normally go to the init B page. However, that's not here. It doesn't work uh, while the engines are running. So if you've loaded up this aircraft for the first time and you're thinking, well, how do I load in the weights and everything? Um, you can't do it on the init A. What you actually have to do in the, in the 320 would be fuel prediction. To get to fuel prediction in the 310, you go progress, fuel prediction. And now we can load in that final bit of information. Luckily, this does actually update live with the load sheet or how we load the aircraft, I believe. So let's ch test that out. So before we go any further, I'm now going to load up the aircraft at the correct weights. So if I go to uh, load and balance, and I know I need 8.8 .8 tons of fuel. And you can just drag these sliders, really great. Now I'm going to put in 10 tons of fuel just to be fussy. Um, because <laughs> you can take 60, so it feels a bit silly going off with 8. Uh, and we are going to have... Um, I'm going to have a zero fuel weight, I think, of about 100 tons. So we can load it up, load up a bit of cargo, a bit more cargo, a bit more cargo, and passengers. Uh, there we go. So we go with this sort of uh, this sort of weight. So we've taken off at 112 and a half tons with 10 tons of fuel. And then all I have to do is click apply, and it applies it, moves the CG, uh, and then you can go live actually and just see what the, the live numbers are. So our current weight versus our plan weight now match. Zero fuel weight 102, gross weight 112. So if I go in here, gross weight 112. So it has updated live, which is great. Um, fuel on board 10 tons. And we just need to enter the CG. Our CG is 23.3. CG goes in there. Good. Right, so that would have been on the sort of version of the NITB. But uh, yeah, so slightly out of sequence, but there we go. Right. Next, I'm going to, go to um, flight plan and load in the flight plan. So just like the 320, select the key next to the airfield that you're departing from. So in this case, one left, as it were. Let me just move the camera for you. Uh, and then I can choose the standard instrument of departure. We're taking off from runway 26 left. And I'm going to go out with a, I do have it written down here. I'm going out with a uh, Lambourne departure, Lambourne 6 mic. So again, you could use Microsoft Flight Simulator to plan this, but you'd need to write it down and then transfer it in as I'm doing here. And then you can insert that once you've got it there. Uh, if I scroll through now, I have all the points from that departure. And if we go to plan, I'll see this on my navigation display. All very familiar so far, and you can scroll through and see it. Airbus has a great system for this, I think, very handy. Good, uh, so from Lambourne now, what are we gonna do next? We have a different route. We're gonna take the airway November 5-7. So let's go back to the Mugu. You can select the next to the waypoint. You can either choose an airway or you could choose um, a hold or something like that. But let's go to airway, November 5-7. Oh, no, so ignore me. So we have to actually select the airway. So we're taking November 5-7 and we're going to get off of that airway at Wellin, which means scrolling down this list on the right to find Wellin. So you see what I've done there? I have selected the airway, November 5-7, and then the aircraft says, okay, November 57 from Lambourne, because that's where I selected November 57. Uh, and then I need to choose the waypoint we're going to leave it. So we're going to leave it at Wellin. So I scroll down to find Wellin, which is there. So Lambourne, November 57 to Wellin. It actually is ridiculous. There's no other waypoint. So it, it's, it's just a straight line. I didn't need to do that. Um, from Wellin, I'm going to take another airway, which is Tango 420, which is there, Tango 420. And I'm going to leave that at Elvos, which is going to be the start of my arrival into Manchester. Elvos. Good. Now there's a discontinuity after that. So next I want to put in my arrival. I can select next to any of the waypoints on the bottom left to do this. So on a 320 it keeps your destination on the bottom. In this one it doesn't. So you don't have to scroll to Manchester to select it and then choose your start. If you just choose a waypoint, um, and then, uh, yeah, a lateral vision, sorry. And then you can choose star. I'm going to do RS23 right. And I'm going to use the Elvos 1 mic. Insert. And now as we scroll through, there's a bit of a discontinuity from Timpo. Um, but there we go. I'll check that against the charts later. So if I keep looking at my plan, all pretty sensible. It takes us through to Manchester. Good. Good news. Right. You can also do the secondary flight plan, but again, we're not going to worry about that today. I'm just going to copy the active into there. Uh, and what else do we need to do? Um, I don't think reference, no. Uh, we need to go to takeoff and approach. And this is where we're going to load in our takeoff performance. So now let's put the performance in, the next thing we need to actually do. So we have a zero fuel weight of 102.4 and a gross weight of 112.5 or 
or just slightly less tons. So let's go to take off performance. Uh, and here you would enter take off run available, Tora. So you need to actually enter it. I can't see a way to actually enter the airfield unusually. Um, so that's a little bit unusual. But what we can do is you, like I said, you could actually go to menu, A cars, and download that weather. Um, but what I'm going to do is use the meter function in here. Now I'm not, I don't know off by heart the take of run available. You could load up your Navigraph charts, which will tell you the take of run available. Um, I'm going to just say it's uh, three kilometers. I'm pretty sure it's that or longer. Surface is dry. Uh, the runway is along the lines of two damage. So that's what's the direction of the runway. So we're on two. So I'm just going to put 260. Uh, wind. If we grab the meter here, oh, no, that's not going to work either. I suspect. Oh no, it is one nine zero at five. Five. Oh no. Five. Enter. Temperature of thirteen. So a nice system. This I like this. Q and H of one zero two seven. Very high pressure today. Weight. So this is your gross weight now. So I didn't need the zero. It's just the gross weight. One one two point five doesn't work. So let's put in one one three tons. Flaps. So fifteen and zero. What that means is the flap settings are different to the 320. We don't have one, two, three, and full, although we actually have the same number of positions, but they are given in angles. So this is a bit of a confusing way to look at it, but you've got zero flaps, then you've got 15 degrees of slats and zero flaps, then you've got 20 degrees of slats, sorry, then you've got 15 degrees of slats and 15 of flaps, and then 20 and 20, and then 30 and 40. So uh, it's four positions, you've got nothing at all, then you've got just slats, You've got slats and flaps, more slats and flaps, even more slats and flaps. Okay, so uh, most common seems to be 15 and 0 because you just just slats, no flaps at all. So that's absolutely fine. Anti-ice off, air conditioning on, uh, and then the output's there. So what I'm going to do is press calculate, and it tells me the flexible temperature, the speeds. Okay, good. So let's start off by putting those speeds in. So our V1 of 136, VR 137. 136... 137 so they go in there now v2 we don't put in there on 320 you would on 310 no v2 we take from here 161 and we actually put it up on the fcu we need to write it in ourselves so many of these processes have been greatly simplified which is really 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 great for the uh, 320 pilots out there so uh, 161 i need to put in here there we go that's our v2 and now you can see in here it says v2 brackets fcu 161 Thrust reduction and acceleration are at 1695, so that's 1500 feet above, as you saw we had it set by default. Next is approach, I'm not worried about that for now. So that's the takeoff page done, uh, and that's pretty much it. So let's go back to map, and I'll leave it zoomed in. I'm going to turn the terrain on, that does work, terrain is displayed down here. We've got the correct Q and H. Um, we need to put the right altitude, so we're going to climb up to 6000 feet. I'm not going to focus too much on procedures and charts for this video, uh, I'm just here to, to uh, show you the 310. Um, bits. Oh yeah, by the way, light for the FCU, we scroll on this one here. There we go. Okay, just to make sure I do something right though. <laughs> Here's our Lambon 6 mic. We're taking off mission, initial stop altitude to 4,000 feet and then 5,000 feet and then 6,000 feet. Now, on the 320, you could actually put in the last one and use manage climb mode or profile mode as it's called in here. But on the 310, that won't work. It will not obey altitude constraints in the climb, only in the descent. Very important for the 310. That's accurate to the aircraft. So that's, uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to put 4,000 feet in the window. And we're going to do two 10 knots around there. And off we go. If I look at my speeds, my zero speed is 212. So we are below. Uh, so we can fly clean at uh, green dot, as it were, um, uh, at all the way around that turn, which is good news. So 4,000 feet, and then I'll manually put in the rest. I'm going to climb in profile mode, and I'm going to climb in nav mode. Now, the heading bug uh, I'm going to set up. It doesn't automatically disappear like 320. Luckily, it's pointing straight ahead. Um, so I'm going to leave that there. You can also choose the bank angle. So you can limit it to 15 degrees, something you might want to do at high altitudes or perhaps certain failures. I'm going to leave it in norm or it will struggle to make it around some of these turns. These are important differences from the 320. Uh, also, I'm going to go in nav mode. So I'm going to arm nav, blue nav, and it's got VS out. I'm going to arm profile. So profile climb in the background there. Profile climb and nav are in blue, as we would expect. Great stuff. Um, let's make sure this is all set up right so we've got v1 we've got v2 we've got man thrust which is fine that's and we've got a stop of 4,000 feet and flight director one is on if it's not this is a flight director switch so off on to make it the birds which is for raw data flying if it's uh, a flick up now if you're seeing this you don't want that 
for this takeoff, flick it again up, uh, and it would swap between FPV and the normal flight director. So that's what we want, which is good news. We've got constraint here on my EFIS control. Uh, and by the way, I should probably set the flaps to 15 and 0, having done that. So that goes 15 and 0 there. Another travel. Some nice sound effects on the this aircraft for that. Uh, good stuff. Now, flex 59 is the temperature. We didn't write that into here, so let's put it in where it needs to go, over here on our computer. So you can have takeoff at toga thrust, but we're not going to do that. So I'm going to go for a flex takeoff. So I press flex takeoff, flexing the temperature. So we're going to tell the airplane the temperature is higher. We're going to tell it it's 59 degrees, and therefore it can put less fuel into the engines because the air is less dense. That's the trick. It's not real. We're just telling it that to get lower thrust. You can see here the target M1 speed is 96%, but if I lower the temperature that we're flexing to, it actually um, increases and increases. There you go, over 100% there. So 59, we can have a nice low takeoff thrust setting. Okay, we're almost ready to go. I appreciate this is taking quite a while, but I, again, this is a, a complicated airplane and there's things we need to do. So just to recap, some of the key things and differences from the 320. We have put in our uh, takeoff performance into the MCDU, but V2 goes onto the FCU. We have put a flex temperature into our thrust computer over here, and we selected flex takeoff to give it that information. So that has gone into there. We also need to make sure we set the trim. So I'm going to go over here to our weight of balance. It says 1.7 up. So I'm going to set 1.7 up down here. Now, this is a great Airbus I mentioned. So 1.7 up there. We have quite a forward nose um, position. Good. Other things we've done for takeoff, we've armed the spoilers in case of a rejected takeoff. We've got auto brake to max. We've got the flap set to 15 and 0 and checked on there. We've got the stop altitude in here. We've armed profile and nav, another key difference. It won't work if you don't. So profile is in the background and nav is in the background as well. Otherwise, you, you'll just take off into basic modes, heading vertical speed and fly off forever. We've got the heading pointing forwards in normal bank angle limit. And uh, yeah, I think that's us in a pretty much a good place. Um, of course, on the overhead panel, we haven't really looked at it because if you load up in this state, it will all be in the right place. But effectively, there shouldn't really be any lights up there. Green lights are fine, but you don't want any white lights. If you see things um, with white lights, it means you've forgotten or something's off that shouldn't be like a probe heat or something like that. So there we go. Uh, good. What we're going to do now is do a take of convict test. So I'm going to release the parking brake and I'm going to hold it on the tow brakes. And let's do the take of convict, which is this button here. Hold it down. And it even says it on that screen on the top left, takeoff test normal. So we're in a good place. So let's discuss the takeoff. I'm just going to reset the brake for a second. Uh, takeoff of the 310, very similar. And again, thank you to Dano Virtual and Matteo for the SOPs on this. Matteo has far more detailed videos already out if you'd like help with the 310 with full procedures. Um, so for takeoff, we're going to uh, move the yoke slightly forward, bit of nose down pressure. We're going to set the thrust to 40% M1 up here to stabilize the thrust. Uh, and once we've done that, we're going to activate the go levers, a bit like the toga button on a Boeing aircraft. Not something we have on the 320, so there's a key difference. So, how do we activate that? Because when we activate that, it's going to engage the thrust, uh, auto thrust, which is going to drive the thrust up to our planned flex temperature over here. All you have to do is press this uh, ATC message button over here. So this is actually a button to do with CPLC or, or something like that. It's not where the real button is on the aircraft, but that's where it is used or simulated in this version which is great really handy so very straightforward bit of forward pressure stabilize engines at 40 percent on the n1s uh, release the parking uh, release the brakes and press that button and it will make sure that drives the thrust or it will drive the thrust up towards a 96 percent as we pass through 80 to 100 knots you can release the pressure on the yoke so that it's in the neutral position uh, and rotate at uh, vr which of course is today 137. You're going to rotate to 15 degrees and then follow the SRS. So this is where things start to feel very much like a 320. It's going to go into SRS as a vertical mode, just like the 320 does. So you can follow that. Gear up, gear lever up like normal. The only difference here is once all the lights are out, the gear lever can actually go to the neutral position in the middle, something they got rid of for the 320, thankfully. But uh, yeah, so like a Boeing up and once all was sealed away, all the lights are out, all the doors have traveled, then it can go off. When we get to thrust reduction altitude, which in this case is 1700 feet, uh, we are going to make sure that we go into climb mode on the thrust limiting panel. So uh, either automatically or we need to press CL for climb or CR for cruise. So we're going to CL for climb. This is telling the computer I'm in climb mode now. I don't want take or thrust as my limit. I want climb. And that way the auto thrust will limit itself to that uh, a new lower setting for the climb. Not necessarily lower, but in most circumstances. 
Once we get above the green F, there'll be a green F, just like on the Airbus, we can get above the green F, we can move the flaps up a stage until we are in just the slats position, the 15 and 0. Once we're above the green S, we can go from 15 and 0 to 0. So as ever, F, get above the F, move the flaps up to the slats position, and once they're at slats, we can move them up to zero, which explains why the 320 has an S position, because uh, the S on the climb out in the 320 never made sense to me in that sense, because we had flaps out as well in the climb out, not in the descent though. Anyway, I digress. Good, and then from there, pretty much as expected, we'll engage an autopilot by moving one of these little levers up, uh, and we'll let it climb in profile mode up to 4,000 feet, and then we'll need to put in the next altitude restrictions as they come along, which you can actually see down here on the nav display. Okay, that is enough talking. It is time we get this aircraft into the air. Apologies for the scenery. Like I say, I don't have data connection for this video. So let's go to the checklist and run. Uh, so we're not going to do before start, or, but we will do the after start, just to make sure. So pitch trim, we've set to 1.7 up. Uh, we've got the rudder trim at zero. Rudder trim is down here. Uh, it, if you have a rudder trim set, it will dial it in and you can press reset to zero there. Uh, which also works with the Thrustmaster TCA pretty straightforward. There we go. Uh, spoilers are armed, like I say, by lifting that lever up. Slats, flaps, we've got 15 and 0. So you can see here, slats are on the left, flaps are on the right, 15 and 0, but it's all on one lever, so I've got it set to the 15 0 position. I'm absolutely fascinated by that, as you can tell. <laughs> ECAM status is checked. anti is not required. Hand signal, that would be to do with the ground crew is received. Before take your flight controls, check. So to check your flight controls, uh, like I say, big yoke, no... Um, no side stick here and no protections when the airplane's flying along so you can roll the aircraft it's, it's much more like a Boeing in that sense uh, we can also see more ECAM down here if we go flight control and now I can see aileron or it's not aileron they're, well, they're inboard ailerons so they are ailerons and rudder on the bottom there and the elevator and then the stab trim which is in the green band for the takeoff position which is good news and then the roll spoilers as well show um, and you can see the hydraulic systems in use. Very interesting. Lots more to discover on this airplane as we fly it uh, more regularly. Uh, briefing confirmed. Slats, slats 15 and 0. Performance we've checked. Takeoff config we've checked. Transponder set. So transponder is down here. Um, and I, I'm going to set it to TAR rate. So it's ready for flying. Don't worry too much about that. Not critical for you simulating your flights at home. Cabin is secured. So TCAS, TARA packs are both on ignition as required. So that suggests you don't have to have it in continuous ignition. You could also have it off for takeoff. Um, I'm going to use continuous ignition. But there we go. Uh, and anti-ice uh, not required. That's the before takeoff checks complete. We are finally ready to go. So, right, releasing the parking brake. Holding it on the tow brakes. Engines to 40%. So smoothly we're just stabilizing those engines we do 50 on the 320 but 40 on the boeings and that is matching up so yeah 40 there we go bit of forward pressure on the yoke so here's the key bit so we're going to release the tow brakes the aircraft starts rolling and now press this button over here uh, and there we go thrust mode engages and it should drive towards 96 percent m1 which it is m1's increasing And then your pilot monitoring would be checking that it does engage. So the thrust levers are now out of our control. 96%. There it is. So thrust is set. 80 to 100. Moving that yoke to neutral. Very sensitive on the nose wheel. I have got nose wheel steering enabled, um, which is perhaps causing that. Uh, and there we go. As the speed picks up, it becomes a bit more natural. There's our V1. And rotate. Rotate, you sort of need to know. So we're just going to pull back on the yoke. Raise the nose. Release the rudder. Let it weathercock into wind. Quite breezy today. Positive climb. Gear up. And away we go. Now pitch into that SRS. You can see it's in SRS and nav mode, which is ideal. And I'm having to hold up a bit of pressure. Doing a little bit of trimming now to try and make, release that a little bit. But soon enough, we'll be at our or thrust reduction and acceleration altitude. So pretty straightforward on the takeoff. Now the gear is up and the lights have all gone out. You can actually put that to neutral. I wouldn't distract yourself with it now. You might want to save that for 10,000 feet or something. But there we go. It's a powerful machine, this, especially when at these light weights. It's a long-haul aircraft, remember, and we're only flying at a very short distance. So we've gone through acceleration, and it's gone to uh, profile thrust, profile climb. If I look over here, this has automatically gone to auto, and it's reducing to 94.8. Let me engage an autopilot so I can show you. So there's autopilot 1, or command 1, it's called uh, back in these days. Good. So now it's flying profile thrust, profile climb, and nav, exactly what we want. So it's going to go 220 knots. Uh, and up to uh, 4,000 feet following the profile. Uh, sorry, won't follow the profile. It's going to 4,000 feet 
on the vertical profile. We're above the green S, so as discussed, flaps can go to zero. We can disarm those ground spoilers, um, and we can get rid of the landing lights. Oh, sorry, not landing lights, uh, the nose lights, just as we would on the 320. Good. So it's already gone in, or it's about to level off at 4,000 profile climb, uh, and it should accelerate to 220 knots, which is the limit on this part of the SID. What we've got now is profile engaged over here, nav mode engaged over here, uh, and yes, what I was trying to say was, crucially, over here we have the limit mode CL climb. So in auto mode now, I don't need to select them. So at thrust reduction, it automatically swapped over from flex to auto, and now it's automatically in climb, because the airplane is smart enough to know what phase of flight it's in. Um, if you go to progress page, you'll actually see climb. It knows it's in the climb phase, so there we go. So that's all good. It's turning around. It's above 3,200. 3,200A means above at 220 knots. So we are below 220 knots. Uh, and we're above green dot. We are clean. So that's all good news. Um, after takeoff climb check, this slats flaps are retracted. So we're looking for zero and zero. Landing gear up and neutral. It is up and in the neutral position. Uh, packs are both on. Our altimeters are currently still on Q and H because we're still at 4,000 feet. So, 4,000 is the limit until Detling 29. You can see Detling, we're at 31 miles on here. By the way, if we go to progress page, you can actually see um, different tuned, automatically tuned uh, VORs, or you can tune them yourself. But there we go. This is just showing us the distance to a waypoint. The actual VORs are over here. The VOR, uh, DME, and needle. So it's tuned Occam, which is back behind us over our left shoulder. Uh, and we're 11 miles away and getting further away. So that's that's where you can see the VRs. And there you go. Now the auto tuned to big in, big, big, just like the 320 does. Uh, and that's over there. So this this panel here, you don't actually need to use. It will tune VRs as it goes. But if you want the distance, it's shown over here. Right, 4,000 feet or below and 250 knots. So now I'm expecting it to increase to 250, which it has. Uh, and it's going to stay at 4,000. But if I stick in the next altitude restriction of 5, there we go. And I wonder if it will climb on its own. That's a good question. I don't think so. But I'm going to press it. No. I'm going to put it. There we go. Profile thrust, profile climb. So I pulled it, which would be an open climb in the 320. But that's put it into managed climb in the 310 it's a bit confusing they've definitely improved and simplified this whole setup of these automatic modes for the 320 there's no doubt about it i think it's a lot slicker now um a lot less buttons uh, but there we go so now it's climbed up to 5,000 feet um, so yeah so you have to pull it and it'll stay in profile if we wanted to do it in open climb i.e just full power just go uh, at the speed i tell you then you can press level change so there's 5,000 feet so let's imagine air traffic control now just clears us straight up to our cleared level uh, or our cruise level. So we wanted to go to 24,000 feet for the cruise. So let's just put that in. 24,000 feet. Uh, and then I can leave it in profile. And if I pull, it will go profile climb. Spools up the engines, raises the nose. There we go. Or I can go level change, thrust, speed. And you can see the speed window now engages and I can choose the speed. So if I wind the speed back to 230, it's going to really pitch the nose up um, and climb really fast until it reaches that 230 speed. But it's going to do all of this using climb thrust. If I wind it higher, it's going to lower the nose uh, and, and try and do the same thing. So it's maintaining our thrust climb limit of 99.4. This limit will automatically increase as you climb, initially anyway. Good. Now let's go to standard. So if I pull this, we're going to flight level. So standard and 1013 and standard over there because I've synchronized them in the settings page. Uh, and I'm going to go back to profile and let it climb, profile, climb, thrust, climb. And that way it will do the 250 knot speed limit and it will then accelerate above 10,000 feet for us. Good news. So I've done the after climb checklist. The next one is going to be approach. Okay, that's all good. Um, so our next step is going to be at 10,000 feet where we're going to uh, adjust our landing lights and do the usual sort of airbusy things when we get there. I've got a little message notification. So let's see what that is. New cruise altitude, flight level 240. Yeah, I didn't put that in correctly at the start, I think. So there we go. It's worked out that's our new cruise. So on the progress page, you can type in the cruise level that you want, so 240. So I could put it in higher at 260, just like you can on the 320, but we're going to go 240. 
and that way you can calculate properly. So 10,000 feet, there we go. Let's get rid of those landing lights, which are off and retracted. Uh, seat belts we can allow to walk around. Uh, and continuous ignition can definitely go off, certainly by now. Good, and we're flying along. So hopefully that's explained what this these modes are. So we've got level change, which is effectively open climb descent. That's just using, that's the quickest way up or down. But when you do that, you need to adjust the speed as you see fit. Uh, and then you've got profile mode, which is effectively the managed mode. But you need to pull the altitude to get it to do that. Over here, we have the heading selector. Uh, you'll notice it's not following us because, you know, we're not using it. But if I push it, it actually synchronizes to where you are. It's that little blue line. So that's quite a handy little feature. So um, every now and then, you can just push it and it will just synchronize where you are. Totally pointless and then got rid of it for the 320. I'm so glad because constantly winding heading bugs around is a complete waste of time for everybody when you're in nav mode anyway, uh, which is a great feature of the 320. <laughs> All right, we're almost at our level off now. So we're going to stop at 24,000 feet. So that's absolutely fine. By the way, one more vertical mode, of course, vertical speed. To get that, we can pull vertical speed over here. So that's pretty straightforward. But you don't need to select this VL. This is to do with war and localizer tracking. And landing is for landing, auto landing and INSs. But if we just put in 1500, there you go. It will target 1500. You get VS. It doesn't tell you what vertical speed it's targeting. But uh, we can see up here 1400. Um, so yeah, but I'm going to put it back to profile my favorite mode as it would be on the 320 we get a little top of climb arrow so it does have a vertical navigation component to it and a wind readout down here so there we go expecting us to level very soon at 24,000 feet you can see here a memo total air temperature in icing range your tat is this number here so it's currently zero degrees so there's a chance of icing uh, so it's warning us you know if we're in uh, moisture then we would probably put the engine anti-ice on engine anti-ice down here on on all model engine anti ice on up there very nice indeed right we're pretty much there so we're going to see this profile climb change to out start or out mode shortly this is quite an aggressive climb 2000 feet minute not too not far to go but that's fine there we go it's reducing now accelerated thrust is coming back so we seem to be skipping the out star mode <laughs> Instead of having an altimeter vertically or a vertical tape, it sort of has this strange box that floats up and down in a similar sort of style. And I'm expecting it shortly to change into some sort of out mode. And there it is, P out. I guess that's profile out, out lock. You can also change it. Instead of flying the profile, if I just want to stay here, I'll just put an out hold. But then we lose our managed speed, as it were. We now have to select our speed. So profile profile out and it chooses the the speed it's expected to fly it's got a lower cruise speed by the way than climb speed so quite normal for it to decelerate here 320 does the same actually climbs faster and then if you're flying in a low altitude with a tailwind uh, as we are then it will just suddenly slow down on you <laughs> um, which confuses or uh, perhaps irks some controllers sometimes but there we go all right now we're here um, you can do all the normal things we would do systems checks fuel checks so systems are all shown on this little display and you can go through them all on here so i won't spend too long on that but you've got all the usual cabin pressurization ac electrics dc electrics so they've separated them here they don't do that on the 320 uh, air bleeds flight controls uh, it's all good but if we get rid of it it automatically goes to a sort of cruise page with the basic engine information air conditioning information just like it does on the 320 sat static air temperature so that's the actual air temperature outside if you were standing there tat is minus four degrees which is or it's shown also down here uh, tat that is the air temperature of, at the front of the airplane where the air is getting compressed so it's uh, it's heating up so it's a bit warmer than the static air temperature fuel used fu 1.46 we've used three tons already we've not really done a whole lot to get to 24,000 feet so quite a thirsty machine and that's when we're very light but there we go uh, as you would expect it's a bit older so use about three tons uh, so let's add that up we've got uh, fuel um, total fuel is 7.4, so plus the 3 tons, 10.4, about right with what we set off with. Uh, fuel temperature, there you go, 0 degrees Celsius. But you can also see as a backup, fuel indications are here. But yeah, it is shown nicely on the ECAM. Now there's a whole load of other things with the systems we can look at eventually. Things like the air conditioning, pressurization, the outflow valves, manual pressurization, electronic systems, uh, and all of that sort of good stuff. But for now, let's talk about getting our descent into Manchester, because it's coming in just 40 miles. So things we need to do before we descend. 
So here we are in the cruise beginning our descent shortly. By the way, top tip, if you pause the simulator, um, then like this onto the pause screen, then the fuel still runs in the background. It's still using up fuel. Funnily enough, that's actually a thing that can happen in uh, in some of the full motion simulators that airlines train with. So what can happen is if you disappear off, as I just discovered, to have dinner and then come back, you'll find that uh, you run out of fuel. So uh, don't let that happen. If it does, you can go over to the mass and balance page and just do another plan, up the fuel and apply. Uh, as long as you don't adjust the weights, it'll be the same. Good, so that is getting ready for the descent. Now you get the weather, you download it via the uh, um, you can download it through the ACARS if you have internet connection or of course your usual methods but we're going to land into Manchester we know we're doing that onto the uh, ILS 23 right as I showed you you press on the left hand side choose the start and the arrival holding options also in here we won't go into that today take off approach page come straight to approach it knows the landing weight of 96.3 our gross weight is 108.2 so that's probably a little bit out um, we've got a bit more fuel than we were expecting I suppose we probably would have been down maybe a little bit lower on the fuel but even so I'll leave that alone anyway um, so we're gonna land with let me just actually let's just check the progress pages up to date because I have adjusted things so fuel on board 5.7 which is correct and a gross weight of 108.1 if I go to live we are gross weight 108.1 good okay so approach I don't know how it's getting to 96 we're not gonna burn <laughs> 12 tons of fuel we don't even have 12 tons of fuel on board so i'm not entirely sure what that's coming from but uh crucially we got to choose a flap setting so uh, i'm going to land at 30 to 40. you could also do 20 to 20 which would be like a flap 3 in the uh, a3 um, 20 family here's our speeds which will show up on the speed tape so going below the green speeds will mean we need to put flap out as i'll talk about as we go and we can put in the mda our arrival by the way is the elvos arrival um, so we're going to go Elvos, Trent, Dane, which will be a hold. So I just need to connect those in. So Timpo would connect to Elvos. So I've got a discontinuity. I'm going to clear that and it goes away straight away. And now we have a nav line. Good. Uh, if we scroll through to Dane, I could enter a hold here by selecting Dane and then hold and then write it in just as you would on the A320. But I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to return and return. Good. So there is the arrival. So, uh, yes, 30 to 40. If you wanted to do 20 to 20, or 20 degrees and 20 degrees, then I could also, I need to also go over to this little switch, the GPWS switch, and tell it we're landing 20 and 20. But we're landing 30 and 40, which is what it's got down there. So I'll leave it alone, and that's that's what we'll do today. Gives us a VAP of 134. Again, if these weights are correct, I'm not sure what this number is referring to, um, but we shall see. So it should be about five knots above our, our sort of amber line that we'll see. Um, that also takes into account that's the V app, not V ref. So that is the actual approach speed, 133. We won't automatically do that. It won't go to 133 on here. We'll actually select it ourselves as we decelerate. Something slightly different. Wind correction. If we wanted to add it in, we could do. MDA for the INS on two three right is for a cat one four four nine. So put it in there, um, and that is. Good. Uh, I can put the H up here if we need to for low vis, but we're not going to because um, we're doing an MDA. Uh, other things we need to do uh, tune the ILS. So it's going to be 109.5 and 232. Absolutely critical. This is a big thing you'll forget, I'm sure. I did many times the first time I flew this aircraft. So you've got to put 109.35 and the course of 232. Not sure why it's accelerating suddenly. <laughs> Seems to be confused as we've gone past some points. But we put the 232 in over here. Remember, I'm not, I've never flown, I should I should have made this clear, I've never flown the 310 or a version of it, the 300. So I, I am working on knowledge I've gained from other people and from flying these in the um, other simulators. So Elvos at 20,000, let's put in 20,000. And in profile descent, the difference with this aircraft is it would have started down straight away, but it stayed in profile out. So I'm going to now uh, pull. There we go, profile descent. And down we go. Now, if we're high, you don't want to just deploy the speed brakes. You need to actually go to the tactical page and then do max descent. And then you force it to descend at a higher speed. And now I can use the speed brakes. A bit like Expedite in the, the 320. You can see the VDEV scale has appeared here. We are above it. The dot's down low down here. 
I believe that's the same as what's showing up here. That's not the INS scale, it's the VDEV scale at this stage in the flight. So we're very high. So I'm going to put all the way down to 80, which is our altitude restriction at Dane. Um, and then we can go from there. Scroll, 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 scroll. You can also click and drag and hold it there. So I'm hoping that by going max descent on the tactical page, it will make up some of the height. But to help it, oh, there you go, we've gone below the profile. So now I can return it to econ mode and let it descend. So there you go, retard, it's bringing the thrust lever back and profile descent mode re engaging as we descend down. Good. Um, auto brake I can select. It won't work if your gear is in the up position, by the way. It needs to be in the neutral or down. So I'm going to go for low auto brake, nice long runway in Manchester. Um, and we're tuning the INS. Uh, we've talked about, well, you would run your brief and so on as per usual. Um, things to note, if you want the INS to appear, you've got to flick down on here. It's in nav mode in the middle, VOR above, which will click it down to ILS and then you'll get your ILS scale. But in nav mode, it doesn't work. So there we go. Now it's like an ILS or landing system scales or whatever other names there are for that in the 320. Uh, good. So um, let's just talk about the approach. As we go down the approach, we'll configure, as we said, using the um, green S and green F speeds that would appear on the speed tape, just like the 320. And we'll configure out as normal as we decelerate. The speed limits are actually on here. So for 15 and 0, 245, 15, 15, 210, and 195, 180. So quite high limiting speeds. Pretty good, pretty flexible options there. Uh, you also need to put in the landing elevation. This is something that does need to happen. So on your charts, um, landing elevation or the threshold elevation is 200, uh, sorry, uh, 55 feet. No, 250 feet, there you go. Airport elevation and runway 250. So. 250 feet there we go helps pressurization system do it we should have really done that before top of descent as it is so now we're sort of working out nicely on profile that's what we wanted to see very good um, what else can we do here so level change if i press that it would actually just follow the speed shown on the other side so level change 270 knots uh, and then it would just fly uh, idle thrust and whichever speed i select so the higher the speed now the faster it will descend Something to note with that is it this is it says there's no auto thrust engaged, but it's actually retarded it and then armed auto thrust is blue. Uh, it says thrust idle in the uh, 320 family these days. But anyway, back to profile again, my favorite mode. Uh, this will stay in CR cruise the limiter mode as it did when we got to the top of climb, uh, and that's fine for the descent as well. No problem with that. Now, if you've been very high in the cruise, you may have put the bank limiter to 15 degrees, depending on SOPs, I suppose. So you need to put it back into norm as you get lower down. I'm not sure if that does routinely get changed on the A310 or not, but if it's at 15, uh, for whatever reason, or you've accidentally moved it there, you're going to find that the airplane will struggle to, um, it will struggle to uh, make intercepts and things like that. By the way, if you are high, so we're not this time, but if you went to your tactical mode because you're too high and did max descent, you could also use the speed brakes. Uh, I can see here that we're a bit fast and it's decelerating gradually, but there's no problem because we're actually below the vertical profile, which is now coming back to meet us. So that's all working out quite nicely. Good. Let's go back to our checklists. And approach checklist uh, is what we'll do next. Um, so let's see what else do we want to discuss. Uh, good, good, good. So um, when we join to join the ILS, now we've got it tuned. As we get closer, we'll see it identified. We'll get the DME on here, uh, and we'll, uh, sorry, we'll get the uh, um, scales all showing and registering it. To make it arm the approach, we'll press land. So that's effectively the approach button. That will arm the localizer and the glide slope. Uh, if you want it to just do the localizer, you can press the V slash L, like, which is VOR or localizer. Um, so that's how you would use that. By the way, if at any point you were radar vectored and you want to go into heading mode, um, on the 320, you just pull, and there we go, heading S, heading select, and it pulls it into that. So it still works. They got rid of that button on the 320 because, of course, you don't need it if you can just pull, uh, and then you can drive it around the sky as you would in any normal aircraft in a heading mode. But I want to go back to, let's go, well, let's cut the corner. Let's say we're not going today, and let's go straight to the center fix, two, three, right. So select it, and so uh, I'll go into direct page. Select the point and it will appear in the top left and then you can press the top right to insert it. And there it goes. Uh, it stayed in heading S mode though, so you must go back to nav mode to do that. Oh, curiosity, what happens if I do that? If I do that? 
So there's a difference between heading and heading S. I don't know what the difference is. Um, but there we go. I'm going to go to nav. <laughs> I've got lots to learn still, lots to learn. Now you can see we've gone high on the profile. Uh, so it's it's trying to dive down, but it's not going to make it. So I'm going to help it out. Some speed brakes. Big speed brakes on the 310. Very powerful. There they are. Running the whole length of the wing. Quite rare. 10,000 feet. Get the landing lights on. I'm going to get the passengers strapped in. We'll run the approach just soon. Uh, and we can go down to... Let's go down to our... Well, let's go down to 4,000 feet initially. Again, this will be done by your radio vectoring or your chart. Now let's set the Q&H. Uh, 1022, there we go. So I'll set that Q&H. Now we're in retard mode, so the thrust is at idle. And we got the speed brakes out. So we're descending quite nicely. 2,200 feet per minute. Still above the vertical profile. You can see the level off at 4,000 feet is coming up soon though, so we just need to slow down. So, if I go to take up approach and press final approach, now you can see it's brought the target speed back to 133. It's driven it back, like the 320 does, to our uh, V app that was calculated at 133. So I've done that slightly early, but there it is. Get rid of the speed brakes now. But that's no good for now. Um, I'm actually, I need the airplane to descend faster, so I'm going to pull the speed and let it descend. And you can see it's basically gone into level change. Yes, it's reverted to level change now. I've, I've removed the profile from it by doing that. So now we're in level change mode. So we are in open descent effectively at 230 knots. We've got about 15 miles to the center fix. Plenty of room. Looking good. Speed brakes are going away. Let's run that approach checklist. So signs are on. Briefing confirmed. Ecam status is all checked. Altimeters are on the Q&H minimums. We've set ignition. Uh, not required and landing elevation we've got 250 feet so that's it next will be the landing checklist we'll fly a similar profile to the a320 so i'll have some slats out and then i'll join the glide slope with a bit of flaps out so we've gone from zero uh, 15 and zero to uh, 15 15 and then we'll put out the gear and then the rest of the flaps as we descend uh, closer towards a thousand feet to be stable As you can see, this routing would join the ILS at the CF and then the final fix. But just to give us a bit of time on the ILS to talk things through and to show you some different modes, I'm going to select it myself. So it's leveling off at 4,000 feet now uh, at 230 knots. That's absolutely fine. And you can see it's reverted to out hold and auto thrust. So it does a lot of this changing of the modes up here, quite different to the 320's philosophy. First of all, I want to fly a different heading. So I'm going to center the heading bug and engage heading select by pulling it. I wish I knew what the difference was heading and heading S. Now I'm just going to turn downwind a little bit so we point away from the runway. Oh, and then uh, and then we'll join from slightly further away. I'm going to put LS on both sides. There we go. And zoom in a bit on the nav display. Let's slow down then. So if I go to Ah yes, so now we're off all the profiles, so the speed is now up to me. We'll come back to our clean speed, minimum clean speeds. And now I'm going to swing the nose rounds, put it onto an intercept heading for the ILS to so two three right, so it'll be about two six zero intercept. Um although I haven't done a very good job here at all. We're probably gonna go through that localizer. But I'm hoping as we turn around the corner we shall see it appear. Let's go to the, our first stage of flap then. So limiting speed of 245, we are well below. So we'll go to position one, which is slats 15, flap zero. Now you can see the VLS or the, the low speed bar move away and there's our green S. So that is now our lowest speed we can fly with the slats at 15. Now crucially, I put the wrong frequency in, 109.5. So you can see nothing's appeared, it hasn't worked. It won't auto tune, absolutely critical you get that right. 109.5, there it is. And now the DME appears on the bottom of the PFD, that's far better, uh, and we get the magenta diamonds. What you do in the real aircraft is, of course, identify that. Now that vectoring hasn't worked, we've gone through, so let me put it round, we'll do a 30 degree intercept from the other side. 
Um, but as we can see, the glide slope is moving in, so I'm going to descend to 3,000 feet now to put myself below that glide slope, ready for a descent. I'll do that in vertical, not VL, I'll do it in vertical speed. There we go. Let's do 1,500, 1,500 feet per minute down now. And I'll wind the speed back to 160, and we'll get the next stage of flap out. So we'll go to position two. Flaps are coming out. Glide slope's about where we are, and we're intercepting now. 3,500 feet at the final fix is roughly the right altitude, so we should be fine there. Again, in real life, you'd have out, uh, radar vectoring, and you'd check that this was definitely safe with the terrain beneath you. So I'm going to press land, and by doing that, glide slope and localizer blue arm on the PFD. As I said, if you press get again, it goes away, and you can just press the VL. It would just give you localizer if you just wanted the localizer. But I'm going to press land as I want both. We're below that glide slope now. I'm going to back off on the vertical speed. I'm using vertical speed so I can control it myself a bit more um, straightforward than, than trying to use the other modes. There we go. Lock star, out star. So it's leveling off at 3,000. Radio altimeter's come alive just like it does on the 320. There it is. And now it's turning to intercept that localizer. And there's the runway over there. I was selecting 160 knots, which is fine because we've got those flaps out. Um, so you can see the maneuvering down that green F is all the way down there. Shortly we'll intercept the glide slope. Glide slope is there, blue and armed, ready to go. Glide slope star. So again, uh, I, I've gone for a bit of flap by the time we join the glide slope. Uh, that's probably a simple thing to do when you're not familiar with the airplane to make sure you have some drag out. If you just have the slats, on the leading edge, they don't provide much drag, so you could find the airplane becomes a bit slippery, a bit fast down the glide slope otherwise, and it might start to run away with you, but there we go. I'll leave 3,000 feet in the window in case we go around. I'm not sure what the actual go-around altitude is, but I'll leave that there. And there we go, DME at 7.9. Um, so this is showing us, this DME over here is showing us our auto-tuned DME on the progress page. It's showing us the Mac Charlie Tango VOR, which happens to be very similar in location. It's just there. Um, but this DME here is the ILS DME, so important difference. Not all airports have co-located VORs or closed VORs like this. Right, um, let's do the next steps then. So as I said, uh, I can... What is it? If I push that, no, if I put it, no, 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 it doesn't do that. So if I go to, to approach, no, okay, good. So now I'm going to lower the gear, so gear down. And when I do that, I'll arm the ground spoilers, put on the nose gear lights. Oh, there we go. And now we'll go to the flaps for the third stage, which is uh, 20 and 20. I'll put in the VAP of 133. Now I can see that that's not, I don't think that's going to work. I think the weights are wrong because of the way I, uh, I have my simulator running. But let's go to flaps full. Maybe it'll be all right. Maybe it'll be all right. 133 is what it says. Yeah, okay. So the amber bar is disappearing beneath it. Lovely sounds, by the way, as these engines spool up and down. Really like it. Okay, we're in a good place then. So, landing check. Landing gear lever is... Oh, landing is down. We've got three greens. Auto brake is low. Anti-skid is checked. So that's on, and then we don't want to see any brakes that are sitting on or anything like that. There are some other checks you can do with that. Um, which are in those SOPs. Uh, slats, flaps, we've got 30, 40. Spoilers, armed. I can see they're armed here. Uh, good, that's the landing check is complete. So we're all configured and ready to land. You can see it's struggling slightly there. Now to land the A310, it's a similar thing to the A320. We're going to flare the aircraft at around 30 feet or start the flare. And that's from a stabilized approach. So just like the 320, they're about 30 feet. Um, and then we're going to want to close the thrust levers. It's really struggling with that speed on this one. <laughs> I haven't seen that before. Um, yeah, we want to close the thrust levers by the time we touch down. Now, oh, my simulator is really struggling. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, there we go. I think it's just loading in some of the scenery. <laughs> okay, that's better. Um, this is very FPS heavy, by the way. I need to fiddle with the settings, um, but it, it, I'm noticing a performance impact of using the, uh, the A310. But like I say, flare around 30 feet, idle the thrust around that point or shortly after, 
um, and then uh, touch down on the main gear. Pitch limit around about 10 degrees, you don't want to go any higher than that on the nose, although it is quite a short stubby aircraft. Crucially though, we're flying the approach with the autothrust in speed mode. Unlike the 320, where if we did this we would close the thrust levers ourselves, it would automatically retard the thrust to idle. So I'm going to leave the autothrust in and I'm not going to touch anything, I'm going to let them just close and it will actually command idle uh, whilst we're in the flare. That's quite a nice neat little system, I haven't seen that before. Pretty breezy day today. We've got wind of, yeah, about 17, 18 knots coming from the left. Um, good for an excuse anyway. So there we go. So uh, I think that's all the differences. Um, and then we're going to put the reverse thrust out. Uh, and then around 80 knots, we're going to cancel the, or bring the reverse to idle. By the way, you'll see the ground spoilers will light up on here, or the speed brake will say on here. And the reverses will show up here, the reverse green. So all pilot off. I'm going to press it once. And if it keeps going, I can press it again. So it keeps going, so I'm going to press the autopilot off again. There we go. Oh, yeah, pretty rough. Overdone on the turbulence a little bit here. But watch the thrust. See how it's going to um, idle on its own. So flaring at 30 feet. There it goes. There's touchdown. Using the rudder. And you'll see that it all uh, works out. And we're going to bring the thrust back. I'll tell you what that config was in just a second. So we got the speed brakes up on here. Oh, and it also says it there, speed brake. And we got reverse green. So just like 320. 80 knots then. I can go to reverse idle. And now I'm going to go to forward idle as we approach taxi speed. Manual brakes to release those. And we'll vacate here. Worked out nicely. So, why did we get that red config warning? And that's uh, worth seeing, actually. That's because, although I said that these will close on their own, which they did, um, I didn't actually move my hardware one. So what happened was they closed, and then it uh, it was giving us the config warning as if those had been uh, driven up there. So that's something you need to remember to do. So it's worth, basically, carrying on like you would in the 320 and just closing those thrust levers on your own because, uh, yeah, otherwise that, that will happen to you. Um, so... It does idle it itself, but shortly after it turns off the auto throttle uh, and just, you know, it's just doing nothing. So if your hardware has them set higher, it will spool up again. So there we are. Welcome to a rather uh, windy and turbulent Manchester, but I hope you've enjoyed the, the flight and that it has uh, given you some, some help getting started with the A310. Like I say, quite a few, quite a few differences. It, it, it's still th so many things for me to learn. Thank you again to Dan Air Virtual for the uh, the SOPs and uh, I will try and follow those more accurately in the future um, but uh, yeah there's mistakes I've made there's mistakes I'll make in, in, in future streams videos but plenty to learn this is a, a nice aircraft to fly it, it's it's really really quite exciting and pleasant to to, to fly it uh, big heavy metal retro jet airliner absolutely brilliant so just great to have this included in Microsoft Flight Simulator in this update for free I mean that's really not something I'd expected to happen so it's uh, it's been it's yeah, what a treat! What a treat for everybody to now have another Airbus to to get uh, to get to use. There'll be more videos coming on the channel, so we're going to cover more things, uh, including guides and tutorials, as well as uh, I'll be streaming it and flying some flights, and we'll maybe do some different uh, different sort of approaches with it as well. So do please subscribe if you'd like to see more of those. Um, otherwise, we'll see you again in another video or live stream soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.